Welcome back to a conference convention edition of the NJCPA Issues Watch podcast, Tech Issues. I'm joining you here today with an excellent friend of mine who's been on the podcast prior, and I was able to convince her to come back on. Welcome back. It took a lot of convincing. It took a lot of convincing, right? And so why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. I'm Melissa Dardani. I'm a CPA here live from the convention. We're having a great time. Um, founder of MD Advisory Services. We're a boutique forensic firm that specializes in fraud investigations, litigation support, and all the fun stuff that goes along with uh, those types of engagements. All the fun stuff then, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're always having fun. <laughs> and so then obviously, right, you know, in your practice, anything technology has to be really, really important. So are there any high impact tech trends that are directly impacting you and your practice and any of your external clients right now? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think COVID did something very interesting to us where it, it forced us all uh, out of our offices and back to our homes, which in and of itself required uh, quite an adaptation. Sure. So people are using Zoom meetings in the way that we used to sit down and have, you know, face-to-face in-person meetings, we've realized, well, now that's something that is, uh, we're able to do in a much more efficient fashion mm-hmm. by way of hopping on a video call. So we're saving ourselves uh, commute and, and hassle that goes along with being in person, of course, but more specifically, um, what it's taught us to do is really uh, adapt and learn to fill in the gaps. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm seeing that in my practice as well as in, in, in my clients, where we're taking a, a hard look at our processes mm-hmm. processes at any point in time and saying, is there the opportunity to improve this, whether it's making it more efficient or cutting out tedious, repetitive tasks that are not making the highest and best use of our resources, mm-hmm. our employees. Sure. So I think that's... Uh, very important and, and and we're actually working very closely with a lot of our clients not only from a financial perspective obviously the accounting profession is changing rapidly it's sure. been a, a major theme at the convention here Absolutely. every almost every speaker is touching on uh how our profession is changing and, and that could be by way of uh, robotic process automation mm-hmm. that's taking mm-hmm. over some of the the, the tasks that we used to uh, be more reliant on on human beings to do, um, and and especially by way of uh, analyzing our data. Absolutely, we have more data available to us than ever. Mm-hmm. So I think it's uh, really important as accountants that we're learning to uh, be able to derive insights from mm-hmm. that data and provide those insights in a way that's understandable and and really focuses on the important. Um, aspects of, of what's in the data okay. uh, to our clients or, or other stakeholders. Excellent points there. And so obviously as a firm owner and a firm entrepreneur, right? As an entrepreneurial CPA, are there any really you know high profile, high impact areas that that that's based on your track record and your sort of hands-on knowledge that anybody either in a firm or their own practice, could try to start with, really maximize all of that really sort of higher end information. Yeah, and actually this is what my session tomorrow is on. That plug in. There for, we go. for the data analytics for accountants and auditing professional session tomorrow. But we start with Microsoft Excel, right? Okay. It's a tool that we're all very, very comfortable using. And it, it has these capabilities that most people don't know about and, and aren't making use of. Mm-hmm. So you have the ability not only to be working in the traditional spreadsheet, right, that, that you sure. and I and everybody else is, is so used to, yeah. but to also use it as a, a small database of okay. sorts. And of course, it depends on the, the, the size and the structure of the data that you're dealing sure. with, but you can actually make use of something like Microsoft Excel via Power Query, mm-hmm. Power Pivot, and visualizations. Mm-hmm. And and of course, Power BI, it's all integrated together. Mm -hmm. So building out dashboards, analyzing data in real time um, to be able to monitor whether it's from an auditing perspective, if your internal audit looking at different um, 
indicators mm -hmm. of fraud or mm -hmm. red flags of fraud that may arise in your processes, or if you're working on the uh, planning and analysis side and, and you're looking to forecast trends and, and where the business is going, we're able to do this in Excel using uh, a more of a back end process that allows us to analyze larger data sets and replicate our procedures without having to actually go through all the steps of replicating procedures. Mm -hmm. So in other words, just dropping new data into our database, mm -hmm. pushing a button and letting it run. Uh, or another example that comes right to the top of my mind is, you know, we export reports from something like QuickBooks mm -hmm. yeah. into an Excel yeah. format. Yeah. Again, um, running a macro, this is something we actually just worked on with one of our oh, clients, okay. is running a macro to uh, build a budget to actual schedule. And mm -hmm. the whole reason behind it was because the uh, advanced version of QuickBooks uh, was the one that was required to be able to run budget to actual reports. They didn't want to expend that additional amount mm -hmm. every month. So we created just a simple spreadsheet that mm -hmm. allows them to fill in their budget to actual report on an, a simple Excel spreadsheet just by exporting it and saving it into a, a particular folder. Awesome stuff, right? And so, you know, it's, it's always necessary to go out and to, you know, upgrade or to, you know, buy new tools or to try to have those awful conversations, right? Because you do have tools and practices and options that are already inside the firm or, or inside your current offer that you can just sort of make more and more comprehensive use of. Sure. Right? And it's not to say that, you know, those conversations can't be had. Sure, and there are course. certainly more powerful tools and, and capabilities out there. I find that Excel is a, an easy sell to kind of begin to show people what, um, what the capabilities are mm -hmm. that accountants have at their fingertips. Once you've started to provide that value to them, um, I, I find that it's much easier than to broach the conversation of, well, have you thought about integrating something okay, like sure. a Tableau into your um, ecosystem? Makes sense, makes sense. And so adding on to that, so the last comment, are there any easier places versus others to, to try to start having these conversations on how to upgrade tools? Well, you work in technology yourself, so I'm sure you can- A little bit, a little bit here yeah, Just a little bit, right? Uh, you can also speak to the challenge that comes along sometimes with trying to get, whether it's clients or engagement uh, partners at firms out of their comfort zones. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's incredibly important that we do. The profession sure. is changing. We do not have the same um, level of access to staff. Yeah, that's just, a big issue. I mean, it's not the accounting profession only. This is mm -hmm. across the board. The Great Resignation has really pulled um, the participation rate in the labor market yeah, down, way down, way down yep. um, to levels that we haven't seen before. And we're just not really sure when people are going to come back to work and, mm -hmm. and what those roles are going to look like. So yep. you see mega large companies like Amazon, as an example, finding ways to uh, replace some of those roles mm -hmm. with technology, whether it's actual robots or process automation techniques like we've talked about, um, and the accounting profession is no different. Uh, and, and I actually think it's it's a good thing because we are going to be able to, by forcing ourselves to automate, which is, is really what's happening as a result of this disruption, we are putting our lower level staff into higher level roles. Mm -hmm. When I started in accounting as, as most uh, of my generation um, and older can appreciate, it was, we're doing the grunt work. Yep. We're doing the data input. We are manually reviewing files. We're scanning them. I'm not quite Bankrupts. green ledger. No, at it. no. Um, that's a little before my time, but there was uh, bank reconciliations, yep. manual bank reconciliations, you know, but tools like QuickBooks didn't have the smart mm -hmm. AI built into it like it does today where it can um, pick up on uh, classifications of transactions and where it thinks that you want to classify those things. So it was a lot more manual work. So yeah, I think it's an exciting time to be an accountant. And I think we have to have those conversations and be able to approach uh, a new way of thinking about things mm -hmm. because the, the world's moving on and we have to move along with it. Absolutely right. You know, and it's sort of a common anecdote that, that, that I would try to use for, for current folks working in the field and then any new college graduates is if everything else is automated, customized, and also personalized, except for us and our work and tasks, it isn't going to build well for us going forward. That's right. And to 
and to try to put a sort of uh, you know, cap on our conversation. All right, update us on the state of NJCPA and NJ cannabis. Oh, because well, there's a lot going on. I'm not quite sure what's going on, so that's why I'm asking the lesson. <laughs> um, so at NJCPA perspective, uh, you know, it's always uplifting to be here at the conference. Mm -hmm. I feel like they uh, pull in very relevant speakers that make us, I, and it's funny because I remember being at this conference three years ago and one of the keynotes pulled up onto the screen a uh, snippet from willrobotstakemyjob.com mm -hmm. okay. and accountants had something like an 80 or 90 percent chance of, of, of uh, doom is, is I think how they <laughs> refer to it. Pretty much, um, yeah. And, and actually that number has changed significantly. And the whole theme of this conference has been, we're not really at risk of being replaced. Our keynote, Johnny there. mentioned that in his breakout yeah. session today. In fact, I mean, again, while some of the more rudimentary elements of our profession are going to be replaced, we as trusted advisors are going to be able to move into um, a much more focused role and a much more mm -hmm. human oriented, um, trust-based role where we're really able to um, interpret the data that we have available and help our clients handhold them through those uh, decisions. So the being at the conference is always very uplifting. For that Absolutely. Reason. Um, from a cannabis perspective, obviously, you know, adult use sales have uh, rolled out mm -hmm. in New Jersey, which yep. is very exciting. Uh, there's a, a Zen Leaf not too far from my home. And mm -hmm. when I drive by it, the parking lot is always packed. You can often see uh, people waiting in line outside and it definitely seems to be uh, booming okay. since since the rollout, which uh, was, I guess, formally in April. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of discussion surrounding the supply and okay. the of accessibility. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing a lot is uh, related to the supply for medicinal patients who are, of course, in mm -hmm. the market first and uh, one of the qualifications for a cannabis business, if you were going to operate in the medicinal and adult use space, was that you had to uh, be able to prove that you would be able to um, support the, the medicinal needs before gotcha. okay. catering to your adult use patients. Um, whether or not that's happening, it might be a little too early to tell. Mm -hmm. But I think some of the rumblings that I've been hearing is that the medicinal market is a little displeased with the level of access that they've been able to get in terms of the variety of the product. and um, I don't think quality has has changed per se, but it, certainly in terms of the accessibility, the variety, and the price. Yeah. So there's that, mm -hmm. um, and then of course, what we care about the most as accountants is, is 280E, and the uh, hope that we're holding on to that the state of New Jersey takes action to decouple from the federal provision, which says that you may not take any business deductions as a cannabis company. Mm -hmm. um, it would be exception of cost of goods sold and what you're able to reasonably allocate in there. It results in a, a very high effective tax rate for cannabis yeah. companies. It's quite discriminatory in nature because you have a, what is a legal business for mm -hmm. state regulation purposes yeah. that's being taxed um, essentially like they're dealing with illicit drugs. And the ironic thing about all of it is that the classification of cannabis under the Controlled Substances Act mm -hmm. is what's keeping us in what I call the 280E trap. Okay. So because it's a schedule one controlled substance mm -hmm. and 280E specifically refers to schedule mm -hmm. one controlled substances. Um, it's this interesting dichotomy where uh, the IRS is kind of looking at Congress to make the change to be classified and Congress is looking at the IRS to say, no, no, you should change the internal revenue code. Good luck with that. So Exactly. So what we're really hopeful for at the NJCPA and, and uh, we've taken a pretty active uh, position is that we would like to see New Jersey decouple from 280E for the purpose of New Jersey income tax, which would provide a slight break. It would incentivize um, businesses in New Jersey to, to stay in New Jersey and, and to continue um, thriving in, in what will be a very booming market. Um, and we're, you know, we're kind of just waiting to see if, if we get any momentum on our, uh, the, the value proposition behind that. Awesome stuff. Well said. And there is a ton of great content, great information going on talking about all of these topics here at the NJCPA 2022 in person, believe it or not, in actual life together in person again. So great to be back, great to be back here. It's awesome to have you on the podcast. I will have to have you on one more time. Looking at, forward to at it. At least. <laughs>